Chris Martin and here bringing another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video and so tonight is the night right part three of the anniversary is going to be officially starting and whilst we have to wait a couple of days extra for the five year EZAs and then a couple of days after that for the anniversary battle special event uh, I made a video going into more detail about that yesterday uh, one of the things that is dropping tonight that we will be checking out live on stream so make sure if you are going to be around uh, when this stuff drops I'm going to be live for it the start of part three um, it officially comes out at 1am UK time so I'll probably go live on this channel around midnight and we can hang out for a bit, get stuff ready, talk some team building ideas, uh, especially if you've watched this video and have further questions. Because one of the big things that's finally releasing for Global is the Sin Shenron stage, right? So stage seven of this Shadow Dragons event. Now, it's quite funny that obviously JP have now just recently got the eighth stage as well, um, which is now the new hardest event in the game for JP but Sin Shenron releases and basically becomes the new hardest fight in the game so if you thought Broly was hard if you thought Metal Cooler Core was hard um yeah welcome to the new hardest event in the game and that is the Sin Shenron stage so we're going to talk about exactly why he's so hard in a minute um I don't think there's any extra info here no so mission wise um there is a mission for stage seven which is to be it with at least three Power of Wishes characters. Now, obviously, being the you know one of the big anniversary events, it should go without saying that the two headline anniversary LRs are very, very good in this event, right? Obviously, they both build up. They can be very strong defensively. They both have the Spirit Bomb that you can build up to that does tons of damage. The GT duo, of course, being you know, especially being the ones that actually fought Omega Shenron, they have the Revival. Uh, which can be super super useful whilst also dropping the spirit bomb obviously which does tons of damage um, and they are str because the sin shenron is int agl and then physical so remember that um, but other than power of wishes that's basically it right being stage seven for the first time uh, just like all the other stages gives you five stones and then a piece of the uh, support memory so is the final piece actually to complete the support memory unfortunately the support memory is kind of useless i say useless obviously it has a use but uh, shadow dragon saga allies 10 percent in battle shadow dragon saga extreme class allies key one for seven turns so it's a permanent buff to shadow dragon saga and then the extreme characters get an extra key for seven turns um i mean shadow dragon saga not a great category right like it has some of the super saiyan fours and stuff on there but they obviously aren't getting this later part um I guess even when like the LR Omega eventually comes out, right? He's leading GT bosses. So the best build of his team isn't even going to be all Shadow Dragon Saga characters. So unfortunately, when you compare it to like last year's anniversary event being the Red Zone, which then dropped the permanent buff to movie heroes and GT heroes, significantly better support memory than this one. But I mean, there you go. The animation is cool, right? With the black smoke Shenron with the cigar. Um, but yeah, that's the only real missions is beat it for once, uh, one time and then do the Power of Wishes category characters. Um, Power of Wishes is a strong category, right? Like even if you didn't pull the Anniversary LRs, you've got the God Gokus on there, Bulma's on there, of course. So a lot of strong characters, Tech Piccolo, etc, etc. But now we'll go over the main reasons why this is so hard, right? So stage one, you fight the Int Sin Shenron. Uh, it can't be stunned, can't be sealed, can't be defense lowered, um, and he randomly changes key spheres. So that can be annoying, right, if you're trying to set up units, especially the turn before. You're trying to leave a certain amount of orbs in a certain place. Maybe you're running units that need to pick up a certain amount of orbs, um, and then obviously that can be a little bit annoying. But overall, honestly, not too bad. Um, and the fact that as you can see from all those modifiers that he can't be affected by you may notice he can be attack lowered so that is pretty useful now his first phase not really the issue right and this is why the boo duo can definitely be good here right because in the first phase they get a chance to build up a decent amount because they got type advantage and then as they get into the second stage onwards you could potentially already be at the point where you use the uh standby now when we get into stage two you fight agl sin shenron can't be stunned can't be sealed can't be attack lowered or defense lowered and then he does aoe attacks 
Now, I'm going to go over the stats as well after this. Now, his AoE attacks while he's in AGL are definitely not as bad as they are in the final phase, but they definitely can catch you out, right? Like, if you have any STR units that really need to attack first in order to get defense, then these AoEs are definitely going to be dealing a significant amount of damage to them. So this is something you do have to be careful of. Um, and this is, of course, only exacerbated when we get to the third stage where the AoEs become even more dangerous. So the physical Sin Chenron, same uh, debuff modifiers, right? Can't be stunned, sealed, attack or defense lowered. He defense lowers with his super attack. So if you weren't aware of like the fights that do this already, when a boss lowers your defense with their super attack, that is one of the reasons why they're able to do such massive damage to you. And even if you have characters that have stacked up a pretty high amount of defense, you can still see them take a lot of damage from these attacks because they're getting their defense lowered by the super attack effect. So that is obviously pretty dangerous right off the bat. And then he has AOE attacks as well. So him being physical and these AoE attacks being very dangerous, you can see he launches two or three. Now, sometimes you can get lucky, just like with any RNG. Sometimes bosses don't super you. Sometimes he doesn't do any AoEs. Sometimes he only does one. And then sometimes he does three and they're all in slot one, which is the absolute worst possible situation you could be in because no one on your rotation gets to attack before he starts firing off these crazy AoEs. So one thing to bear in mind that you definitely have to think about when you're building your team for this event is bringing units that do not require attacking to get their defense. Now, bringing the odd one or so isn't necessarily going to mean you automatically fail. But I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of it is RNG in this game, right? You could get them on a rotation where he is then attacking three times in slot one or even once. It like depends on the unit, right? Um, and how much defense they actually do need to get from attacking. But that's something you have to really think about when building your teams uh, to fight this uh, Sin Shenron. So if we go ahead and look at his stats here, uh, let me put this in the more in the middle, there we go. So Sin Shenron in the first phase, the int one, uh, 33 million HP, 330,000 attacks. So what that means is his normal attacks do 330,000 damage, but this is before factoring in your unit stats, right? So if your unit has 330k defense then they take no damage well they take double digits right because you can never take zero now bear in mind obviously you have to then factor in things like type advantage um technically extreme units do more damage to super so that is slightly higher if you're being if it's super units being attacked um and obviously it's less damage if you are a um physical unit and more damage if you are a tech unit so a super tech unit is going to take more damage than this but if you've got units that are rocking around four to five hundred k defense uh then they're not going to be taking any damage from this guy when it comes to his uh, normal attacks his super attack uh does nine hundred and twenty four thousand. so his super attack does almost a million damage um but again defense wise like it means if a character's rocking say 500k defense they're still taking 424k from this super um and that's if they're extreme um and not like physical or tech right so that's something you have to bear in mind uh he can only super once per turn and it has a cooldown of eight what that means is if he super attacks you and he's attacking anywhere but up to like seven more times in the turn none of those other attacks can be a super right now if he's attacking you as the first attack of the turn and there are eight other attacks then in theory he could super attack again as the final attack of the turn although i'm pretty sure with the number of attacks this guy does i don't think he does enough attacks that he can ever double super you uh, someone can confirm but the int sin i don't think i don't think any of the sins in fact can actually double super you so that's something to bear in mind but these are the kind of numbers that we're talking about right so 330k you need to be rocking at least like 400k defense to not take damage from his normal attacks and then we move on to agl sin shenron he has 30 million hp his normal attacks do 420,000, so a little bit higher not still not too crazy um and then he does his aoe the aoe damage does 420k um i'm not sure what the aoe damage 2 plus means um, I'm not sure if that means the unit he's hitting first takes more and the rest take less or if it's the secondary if he does more than one AoE those do less damage I'm not really sure how that works but as you can see those are around the same as his normal attack level 
Now that does mean, I did say the AGL one is not quite as scary as the physical one, but remember, when it comes to these units that need to attack to get their defense, if your unit only has like 150k defense at the start of the turn, they're potentially taking, depending on their typing obviously, they're dependent, potentially taking like 300k from his AoE if it's hitting them before they attack. So that's why you really have to look at like your unit's passives, their super attack effects, and... Um, Make sure you're bringing the right units into this event because then his super attack does 1.17 million, so over a million damage. Um, he also has the one per turn with a cooldown of eight, yeah, so he can't super more than once per turn. So the AoE is the scary. I mean, the super attack doing just over a million damage is obviously pretty scary as well, but this is kind of in line with these events like Broly. I'm pretty sure Metal Cooler Core hits harder than this. Um, but then, <laughs> Then we get on to physical Sin Shenron, the final boss, the actual new hardest boss in the game, right? The new uh, Mac Daddy. He has 71 million HP. His normal attacks do 480k. So as a super type unit, you need to have at least 500k defense to not be taking damage from this guy, um, which is, you know, some units just, if you're not meeting that threshold, then you could be in trouble. He attacks 10 times in a turn and he can AoE up to three times. And his AoEs, as you can see, his secondary one doesn't do less damage. So this is why he is more dangerous than the uh, AGL one. And they just all do 480k, which again, is the same as his normal attack power. So if you have a unit that is, uh, what did we say before? 150k defense at the start of the turn. Um, if they're a super unit, they're potentially taking like 300k from his, or sorry, 400k almost even, right? Because they're taking, we take away the 150, that leaves like 330. And then if they are super type, they're taking a little bit more. So yeah, they're potentially taking like 350k damage from these AoEs that he could be doing multiple of. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's the big scary thing for the Sin Shenron fight, right? All these AoEs. Now again, you can get lucky. We've all seen these uh, truth videos where He's only attacking in like slot two. Um, and so then you can put any units on that rotation that need to super first to get their defense. They can go nicely in slot two. So they're not taking any normal attacks in slot one. Then they get to super. Then he does his AoEs and then that unit is fine. But sometimes all those AoEs are in slot one. And depending on the rotation you've got, it's either use an item or it's GG for you, basically. So that's something to bear in mind. And then his super attack does 134. Uh, sorry, 1,344,000. I think that is less damage than Metal Cooler Core. But the reason why it's more difficult is, is because he's doing that and potentially a bunch of other AoEs in the same turn. And it only has a cooldown of 5. And how many times does he attack in a turn? 10. So, like, technically it is possible that he could double super. I don't know if anyone has had that happen before. Um, I have, I've not watched a ton of the Sin Chen Run videos from JP because I do like to formulate a lot of my own opinions and do this stuff myself. You guys know that if you've come out to a lot of the streams or videos where I'm doing an event for the first time. But in terms of how the stats work, if he's attacking 10 times in one turn and his cooldown super is 5, then in theory he can super twice per turn. So that makes him like Broly, but doing around the same, if not slightly more damage, and then also doing potentially three AOE attacks in one turn. So this guy is absolutely insane. Um, let me know what you guys are thinking. What teams are you planning to go up against him? I mean, it's the new hardest event in the game, right? So it goes without saying, you need to be bringing your best, like 200% teams, fully link leveled. Um, I don't know... I'd have to, I don't know if this event has been beaten with a free-to-play team. I'd have to double-check. I'll have to check Jay Fanta's content, but I'm sure if anyone's done it, he's done it. But, yeah, this is going to be a tough one. So, I mean, obviously, free-to-play, if you're a free-to-play player, that doesn't mean you don't have summonable units. But I don't know if anyone's done it with, like, a, a team of full free-to-play units. But certainly going to be interesting. So we'll be trying that out for the first time on the stream tonight when it actually drops. And then, of course, uh, based on the polls that I posted for you guys to get an idea of when you would want it to be, uh, straight away or waiting until the weekend, um, I can announce, uh, I'll be posting on Twitter about it and stuff as well, but I will be doing the stream that I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for out there in the community, fellow supporters of the Heroes Agenda, I will be doing the Heroes versus Sin Shenron no item attempts 
uh, on Monday. It will technically start early Monday evening UK time. So it'll be like late Monday morning slash Monday afternoon in the US, I guess, depending on where you are. Um, and yes, I'll be doing these no item attempts. So we all remember Truth made his video of Heroes vs. Sin of over an hour of him dying. Um, I made a response video. I think he made another one back to me. Um, and we kind of discussed it a little bit both on Twitter and in those YouTube videos. Um, but you know, if there's one person in the community that's going to get it done, it's going to be your boy. So come out to the stream and, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be a one and done, but we're going to be live for a good few hours, I imagine, uh, slogging away at it. But I've done every other event in the game with the Heroes team, every stage of every red zone, all six of the uh, Shadow Dragon stages that have released so far. This Sin Shenron stage, when it comes out, will be the only event in the game that I have not beaten with the Heroes team. So we will be doing that stream on uh, well, what is basically tomorrow. So come out and check that out. It's definitely going to be a fun stream. Even if we don't end up doing it on the first stream, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. So come check it out. And uh, I mean, yeah, if we get the winning run done, not only is it going to be the run that Truth couldn't do, you guys will get to say that you were there when it happened. So hopefully I'll see you there. But let me know what you guys think about Sin. What team are you planning to take in against him uh, when the stage comes out? Let me know all of that down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Masked Ninja smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new check out the links down below for the discord and the merch store and i will see you all again soon have a good one